Hi there, I'm John McMillan, and welcome to this edition of PCB Tech Talk, the podcast where we'll be talking about design tools, the EDA industry, and the questions that you're asking. I'll be bringing in special guests from time to time, including subject matter experts and EDA industry leaders. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast, let me know the topics you'd like to discuss, and if you'd like to be my guest right here on PCB Tech Talk. Today, new consumer electronic products are coming to market faster than ever. From established smartphone companies to new connected home companies, the race to be first to provide users with unique features, functionality, and better technology is on. And surprisingly, so is the need to accelerate product design time and launch to market is critical. For the hobbyists and makers, new low cost or free design tools and development platforms are removing many barriers to invent and create new products. Crowdfunding is enabling product creators, particularly electronic internet of everything products, to test the product's consumer buy-in through crowdfunding sites to raise the funding. Successful funding can accelerate electronic product time to fabrication, manufacturing, and time to market. Speaking of crowdfunding, I'm a big fan of the television program Shark Tank, the show where entrepreneurs pitch their product to a panel of wealthy investors in hopes of getting business funding, and just as importantly, in my opinion, is the seemingly priceless television exposure. Of course, being in the electronic design automation industry, I enjoy seeing the new and different electronic products being pitched the most. Not so surprisingly, we are seeing more and more products being pitched on the Shark Tank that started out on a crowdfunding site and that exceeded their fundraising goals. This virtual proof of concept, consumer buy-in, goes a long way in piquing the investor's interest. For example, a recent Kickstarter project for a wireless charging pad for smartphones and wearable devices with a crowdfunding goal of only $10,000 has already made more than $165,000 and shows no sign of slowing down for the duration of their campaign. And campaigns typically last uh, for 60 days at the most. The need to accelerate product design time and launch to market is critical not only to startups and crowdfunded projects, it is critical to established electronic product companies as well. Products that have been historically techless from light bulbs to doorknobs are being re-engineered as electronic products and connected to Wi-Fi through smart home systems. They have features including touch pads and fingerprint scanners, Bluetooth, and are controlled with apps. We are witnessing the evolution of smartphones and wearables, appliance and automobiles, and the growth of electronics content required for products has grown exponentially, particularly over the past decade. This electronics revolution has and continues to transform the way we imagine, the way we design, and the way we manufacture electronic products. Automotive electric vehicle makers like Tesla are breaking the mold. What we've come to identify as a typical automobile manufacturing company now fits the mold of an emerging technology company, a software company, a power supply company, a battery company. Product design in large companies is no longer piecing together subsystems to give rise to more complex systems from the bottom up, but instead are designing systems of systems from the top down where they have the big picture in mind, co-designing collaboratively with each of the smaller segments. In an industry like automotive, where design can start with the human and environmental interfaces in the head unit, for example, with a touchscreen display control, essentially a giant tablet, The head unit alone in the Tesla Model S electric sports car, for example, has more than 10 printed circuit boards, including printed circuit boards for wireless, GPS, Bluetooth, and video computing modules. They've become customers of industry electronic chip and component companies like NVIDIA, Texas Instruments, Freescale, and Analog Devices. The top-down approach assures that all of the subsystems meet the requirements of the overall system, where each area of technology is carefully considered throughout the product creation process with seamless interfaces and real-time synchronization. The evolution of electronics and everything requires more printed circuit boards than ever, which requires that every aspect of how each PCB in its environment, in its system of systems, and overall system, through tight integration with mechanical, thermal, electrical, electronic, embedded software design tools function. 
and as products like electric vehicle designs evolve and become mass manufactured, power device packaging will demand even higher performance and addressing characteristics including thermal, inductance, tolerance, and vibration. This top-down paradigm shift of designing systems in context within an integrated collaboration platform and accurately representing what is real and simulating what is possible is being accelerated with product lifecycle management software, where the real and digital worlds of product definition, design, implementation, verification, and manufacturing converge. So, what are some of the specific product design accelerators for product creation and printed circuit board design that accelerate the product's design? Firstly, let's imagine you've got a great idea. You check off all the boxes that apply. Perhaps it's a new product that solves a problem. Perhaps it's a modernized design of an existing product. Or perhaps it's a new product category altogether, which the industry or consumers haven't even imagined. Chances are you don't need to start from scratch. If the design includes an audio amplifier, for example, there are literally hundreds of reference designs available online and free to use either as is or as starting points. They often include performance specifications, schematic diagrams, printed circuit board layout files, a bill of materials, and even user guides. Reference designs can serve as a great design accelerators. They save engineering time and they can even present greater ideas. The second thing I want to talk about is design components. There has been huge advancements for component selection in PCB design. In fact, there are many online businesses now specifically targeted to ease and accelerate the electronics component selection process. Many of these sites supply free, ready to download and use on-demand schematic symbols and LAN patterns for the PCB. And they supply these schematic symbols and LAN patterns ready to use in many different EDA tool formats. Also, many component supply companies are also supplying symbols and LAN patterns with searches that facilitate custom sorting and searches based on parametric data, a specific component manufacturer, pricing and availability and so on. You can accelerate your product design time by not having to build symbols and LAN patterns from scratch or even avoid manufacturing delays by selecting components that you know are readily available in stock. Okay, so you've spec'd out your new product. You've leveraged reference designs and compiled a bill of materials. Perhaps you've even built a proof of concept design and have identified what the end product looks like. What's next? Particularly for consumer electronics, let's use a wearable device, for example. The look and feel, things like the size, the shape, the weight are critical and typically begin with the electronics housing. This housing, and it must also be manufacturable at a price point that consumers are willing to pay for it, this enclosure gets designed in a mechanical design tool. Once the product's enclosure is defined, which brings me to the next product design accelerator, is the ability to seamlessly collaborate design intent back and forth from the ECAD, the PCB layout tool, and the MCAD, mechanical tool domains. True real-time ECAD-MCAD collaboration is a process that supports a bi-directional digital communication of baseline data, that is, the design extents or PC board outline as well as incremental design changes are automated through a review and approval process between the design domains. This way, ECAD and MCAD designers can work together, perhaps making trade-offs to reach an optimal PCB layout and product enclosure. That said, the ability for ECAD and MCAD teams to collaborate on design data alone is not the only driving factor when it comes to laying out the printed circuit board. Which brings me to the next product design accelerator, the right layout tools. The layout tool you use needs to support the complexity of your design. So you're probably wondering what the heck that means. Well, let me give you an example. These days, it's hard for me to imagine many new products without IoT in mind and either have built-in support for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or perhaps even RF. These IoT-enabled devices, generally smaller, not only add a level of complexity with regard to layout space, but often require multiple PCBs that include rigid flex elements in order to fit form factors. They often require some degree of simulation, and things like virtual prototyping in the design tool can minimize or even eliminate design respins that result in lost time and increased cost. There are layout tools that can analyze and address signal integrity, power, thermal, even electromagnetic and vibration analysis. 
These are all features that should be considered in the layout tool as necessary to ensure the product performs as required and is reliable. Additionally, tools with enhanced layout features like automated placement, planning, and routing capabilities not only accelerate PCB layout, but also can ensure that the PCB design is correct by construction. Okay, to this point I've talked about design accelerators that can be utilized to accelerate during the PCB design. But another important area of product acceleration is ensuring that no delays are encountered with the PCB after it has been sent out for fabrication. Getting a call from a fabricator with a problem, PCB data, can be costly. This next accelerator I'll talk about can ensure that the design meets all of the fabrication requirements. That is, that the design for test, design for manufacturing, and design for assembly requirements are met to ensure smooth transition to PCB fabrication. The last thing you want is to have taken advantage of as many of the time and cost saving design accelerators that I've already mentioned to you only to discover issues after the handoff to the fabricator of the PCB. This next product accelerator is DFMA, Design for Manufacturing and Assembly Analysis. Design flows that have embedded DFMA analysis either included in the layout suite or has access to DFMA analysis tools in their PCB design process can be used to avoid expensive revision spins, improve the quality of the final product, which again results in cost and time savings. For example, DFMA analysis can analyze all design technologies, FR4, rigid flex, flex, and even packaging substrates by running the necessary checks that help optimize the design during the initial design process. It can check your design netlist against the manufacturing data for connectivity errors. It can even ensure that your bill of materials matches the design and ensures the parts are a physical match. DFT, for example, uses rules specifically developed for programming in-circuit test equipment and guarantees 100% testability for all the nets prior to fabrication. DFF, designed for fabrication checks, ensure that the design is manufacturable and that all of the necessary fabrication workflow checks are run and any issues have been eliminated. As you can see, there are many ways to accelerate a product during design and avoiding post layout issues, issues that ultimately impact a product launch date, especially with a product in a competitive market, accelerating product design can make the difference. Well, I hope you found the information in this podcast interesting. As always, be sure to check out all of the podcast show notes. There you'll find some links where you can learn more about the design accelerators that I've referred to during this podcast, as well as my email address where you can send me your comments and questions. I'm John McMillan, and thanks for listening. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to listen to past podcasts. And be sure to catch the next episode of PCB Tech Talk.